Well, welcome to uh, the, our Facebook Live question and answer time where we're answering questions from Andrew's live Bible study from last week, uh, last, last Tuesday evening when da actually Daniel Amstead <coughs> was uh, teaching uh, on, on a great subject about the different rhythms of grace. And so we're going to be answering a uh, number of questions that you had. And so uh, uh, you may want to get a pen and paper, write some of the answers down, maybe write some of the scriptures down. That would be uh, helpful. And then just remember that uh, tonight uh, at, at uh, 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, uh, Andrew's live Bible study uh, and, uh, will, be, uh, will, uh, will be viewed uh, available then as well. So uh, I want to, before I start answering the questions, I want to tell you a funny, this is, uh, this is called Pour It in the, Pour it in the River. A minister was completing a sermon on temperance, and with great emphasis he said, If I had all the beer in the world, I'd take it and pour it into the river. With even greater emphasis, he added, If I had all the wine in the world, I'd take it and pour it into the river. Caught up in the fervor of the moment, he shook his fist heavenward and bellowed, If I had all the whiskey in the world, I'd take it and pour it into the river. His sermon completed. The minister sat down to catch his breath. <clears throat> the worship leader stood, trying hard to keep a straight face. He announced for our closing hymn, let us sing number 365, Shall We All Gather at the River. <laughs> That's funny. I don't care who you are right there. That is funny. That is awesome. We need to, we need to laugh. A merry heart does good like a medicine. So, uh, you sent a number of questions in, and, and again, uh, in Andrew's live Bible studies uh, and all of the live Bible studies uh, each day, we give you opportunity to, uh, uh, through chat and Facebook, to send in, uh, send in your questions. And, and uh, for Andrew's live Bible study on Tuesday nights, uh, we don't get to all the questions, and so uh, we uh, we have this time with you. So uh, Damon on Facebook uh, had this question. He said, I have a question that might be off subject, uh, but do you have to be water baptized before you can be baptized with the Holy Spirit? Well, Damon, is a good question. The quick answer is no. Um, in Acts chapter 10, it records the account of Cornelius, a centurion Roman soldier, that received a vision from God um, after he was faithful to support the Jewish synagogue and in his giving and also his prayers to God, though he wasn't born again, uh, he received a vision from God to call Peter to come and speak to him in his household who would tell him what he should do. And none of, the, none of his household was saved, and Peter subsequently had a vision while the soldiers were coming to, uh, to uh, call uh, the, uh, Peter to come to Cornelius' house, uh, and that vision revealed to Peter that he was to open his heart to the possibility of the Gentiles being saved. At that time, they uh, they'd only uh, really had vision for, uh, for the Jews to be saved. And then when, when Peter went with them, he found Cornelius... And many of his close friends and relatives gathered to hear uh, the word of God from Peter. And Peter started to preach the gospel to them. And while he was speaking uh, in Acts chapter 10, it said, The Holy Spirit fell on all those who heard the word. Then Peter said in verse 47, which is going to answer your question, Damon, Can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So we see from this account that Cornelius, his relatives, close friends, and all, all of them uh, both were saved and received the baptism in the Holy Spirit prior to them being water baptized. So the answer is yes. I mean, uh, no, you don't have to be water baptized before being baptized with the Holy Spirit. But why wouldn't you want to be water baptized? Water baptism 
is an outward sign of what's going on on the inside of you, and it's a point of identification with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Uh, I actually call it the funeral, the funeral service for your old man. So I encourage you to be water baptized, but you don't have to be water baptized before you are, are filled with the Spirit. But you have to be saved, you have to be born again before you were, you were filled with the Spirit. So Ruthie on chat uh, asked this question. The Bible talks about people finding favor in the eyes of God uh, or man, such as Noah and Ruth. And my understanding um, is that grace is undeserved favor. So what did people like Noah or Ruth have or do that other Bible characters didn't? Well, it's a great question, Ruthie. You know, in, uh, it's not just what Noah and Ruth and, in fact, uh, Mary in the, in the New Testament. Uh, it talks about Mary uh, found uh, great favor. She was highly favored, I think the angel said to her. So if you can be highly favored, you, you could be lowly favored. Well, what is it that makes the difference? Well, James 4, verse 6 and 7 tells us that God resists the proud and gives grace and that word grace is the word charis, but uh, it also is translated favor in several places. So God gives grace or favor to the humble. So uh, obviously one of the chief character traits uh, in Noah's life and Ruth's life was humility. And, you know, in Mary's life and also in disciples' lives today. Uh, pride argues with God and rebels against His instruction and direction in our lives. Uh, humility agrees with God and depends on God. In, or, in order for us to walk in this kind of favor and grace, it's very simple. Just agree with God and, and agree with what God says about you. Agree with what He asks you to do. And then don't respond with false humility and say, oh, no, not me, Lord. Uh, you know I don't have the skill. You know I don't have the experience. You know I don't have the training. You know I don't have ed the education or the finances to do that. That's pride. You know, where people are arguing with God about what He's asked you to do. You know, if, if Jesus is Lord, then the answer is, yes, Lord. Uh, we can do that. Yes, Lord. I can go there. Yes, Lord. Uh, that's who I am. Who you, who you say I am, that's who I am. And I, I agree with that whether I feel like it uh, or, or not. And pride is saying, oh, no, no, Lord, not me, no. Um, then, then, look, the humble person is uh, agrees with God, whether he has the money in the bank, whether he has the education to do what God's asking him to do, whether he's got... Uh, the skill or anything. He just agrees with God. All right, Lord, uh, you know, I don't know how we're going to do it, but my eyes are on you. And, and yes, we're, we're going to accomplish that. And then the humble person depends upon God rather than yielding to self-reliance to fulfill it. And so, Ruthie, the real issue is, uh, as I see it for grace, is God gives more grace to the humble, and he resists the proud. And so it's not about, you know, behavior and, you know, doing better than somebody else or, or anything like that. It's, it's about are you yielded to the Lord and are you saying yes to him and, and then are you dependent upon him to carry out what he put in your heart? Great question. Um, then this is a GTZ. J-A, so uh, I don't even know how to pronounce that, uh, Gitzja or whatever on Facebook. <clears throat> Can we attend uh, the healing school ministry in person on August 13th? Uh, so yes, healing school this week is the only part of healing is here that the public can attend. And so uh, if you want to come to healing school this week, this Thursday, you you can uh, uh, you can attend that. Okay, so Lo, uh, Lolo 
on chat ask if God's uh, face is His presence, is His grace His presence, or is grace a lot of other things too? Well, you know, grace isn't just one thing, Lolo, so that is a good good question. Uh, you know, gr God's grace is His enabling ability, uh, His resources, His strength, His gifts, um, His wisdom, everything He is and everything He has that He freely gives to you and me. And that would, insert, that would certainly include His presence, but not limited to His presence. So, you know, I, I just look at grace as, you know, everything God has, everything He is, you know, He's given that freely to you and me, and so it's available to us, and it certainly is a lot more. It's more than just one thing. Um, Kathy on Facebook, this is so good. Uh, she's talking about Daniel's uh, teaching last Tuesday night uh, as he took da took Andrew's place. Daniel Amstutz taught, uh, and he taught about the the rhythms of grace. It's great teaching. You can go back in the archives and and watch it. But uh, even though Daniel can't cover the other three rhythms of grace, would he share what they are? And, you know, he, he talked about four different rhythms of grace, but he only really uh, amplified one, and the one was rest. And, and, uh, and I spoke with Daniel about this, uh, Kathy, and he's going to be, Daniel's going to be teaching about the, the other three rhythms of grace in subsequent live Bible studies. It may not be on a Tuesday night. It could be, you know, Monday morning or Friday morning or uh, Wednesday morning or uh, at eight at seven o'clock or a, or a Tuesday or Thursday evening. But anyway, watch for the next time that he teaches. But he did tell me I could tell you that the other three rhythms of grace are work, play, and worship. And so he'll be uh, he'll be teaching and expounding on that in subsequent uh, live Bible studies. So Lydia on Facebook uh, said, Good evening to all from New York. My question is, what, what exactly is praying in the Spirit? Please help. Well, Lydia, 1 Corinthians 4, verse 14, verse 2 says, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands him, howbeit in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. And then 1 Corinthians 14, verse 14 says, If I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. And so praying in the Spirit clearly here is, uh, is praying uh, in other tongues or praying in a, in a language that your mind can't control. It's not praying, and praying in the Spirit is not praying with more anointing or more extra energy, or I call it my own word, spizzerinctum, you know. Praying in the Spirit is praying in other tongues, a spiritual language that your mind cannot comprehend or control that you receive when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. Your spirit, your spirit is praying when you pray in, in tongues, and it says in verse 2 that when you're praying in other tongues, you're speaking mysteries to God. And then in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 7, it says that we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. So when we're praying in other tongues, we're drawing on the wisdom of God that's in our spirit that will eventually water our minds with wisdom and understanding. And actually, in, in, uh, you, can, you can read in Isaiah 28, 11 and 12, it talks about the, uh, praying in other tongues is uh, one of the things that gives rest and refreshing. And so there are a lot of benefits. Uh, you, 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 uh, Jude 20 and 21 says it keeps us on our most holy faith. It uh, keeps us in the love of God. Um, it in, uh, praying in the Spirit, uh, we, we encourage ourselves, we build ourselves up. Praying in the Holy Ghost, a lot of, a lot of great benefits praying in the Spirit. Raj on chat, how does the fourth commandment about the Sabbath day of rest relate to us today? Well, Raj, you know, I'm, I'm not opposed to saying that we still need to 
you know, take one day a week where we're not working and we, and we, and we rest our minds, a lot of us would, would benefit by uh, unhooking electronically and, and uh, not working continually th through the night and the weekend. But uh, essentially Jesus today is our Sabbath rest. Uh, Hebrews 4 verse 3, for we who have believed, and in the context there, believed in Jesus and His finished work on the cross on our behalf, do we, we who have believed that do enter into rest. Jesus is our high priest that we can come to to find grace and mercy in time of need. And you can find that in, in Hebrews 4, 12 through 14. And then Matthew 11, 28 through 30, Jesus said, Come to me, all, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and lowly in heart. You'll find rest, rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. So coming to Jesus and casting all of your cares on him brings us into a true Sabbath rest that God intended us to live in. It's powerful. Janet on Facebook, how do you pray to heal dementia? Well, Janet, just like we pray for any other disorder in a human body, Jesus, uh, you know, you just pray, Jesus, you took this infirmity in your body so we don't have to. By your stripes, we were healed, so that means we are healed. Two verses, Janet, that I use a lot for people who are suffering from dementia or Alzheimer's or 1 Corinthians 2 verse 16 that says we have the mind of Christ and in Proverbs 10 verse 7 says the memory of the just or the memory of the righteous is blessed. You need to speak over your memory or the memory of your loved one and call it blessed and, and, and to just declare you have the mind of Christ and and, and have your loved one <clears throat> agree with you about that, and then you speak that over them. Uh, they don't have to stay. People who have dementia don't have to stay that way. They can, God's, God's promised us a good memory. Uh, these are great questions. Larry on Facebook, how do you keep balance or even influence uh, people with God's peace around you if people are full of negativity or reality? Well, first of all, Larry, it's a, it's a great question. First of all, you want to choose your close friends and relationships wisely. He who walks with wise men will be wise. So don't allow your inner circle of relationships to be people who are negative, accusers, blame shifters, or victims. You can't hang out with the turkeys and fly with the eagles. Secondly, don't enter into agreement with negative people who are, who are uh, cutting down our president or authorities or who are gossiping about others constantly or they're, they're just a drain. Just let them know that your ears are not garbage pails. If these people are people that you work with, uh, get you some earplugs or, you know, uh, something that you can uh, s just play some worship music. Or even better yet, when they start uh, gossiping about somebody or uh, you know, speaking negative about the president, just, if, uh, just ask them, especially if they were a Christian, just say, well, I'm glad you have such a burden for them. Why don't you lead us in prayer for them right now since you've got such a burden for them? Now, you know, if thirdly, if it's a close family member that you're living with, you may simply have to ask them to respect your request uh, to not be so negative about others. Or you can simply change the subject. Every time they bring something negative up and start talking about positive things that are going on. You know, if, what you'll do, if, the, if, if, you don't, if you won't agree with them and you won't listen to them, about their negativity or, or give them sympathy when they're complaining or blame shifting, after a while they're not going to come talk to you. They're not going to be dumping on you. And, you know, uh, 
Start talking about positive things. Every time they bring something up negative, be ready for to share something positive that you've experienced that God's done in your life. And after a while, they'll get a clue and stop, stop dumping all that stuff on you. Well, guys, it's been great to be with you on this live Bible study uh, Q&A Facebook time. And uh, again, tonight, I want to encourage you, uh, tune in uh, at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time uh, to watch an, an, another uh, powerful uh, time of our live Bible study with Andrew Womack. So uh, I just want to speak blessings over you, peace over you, and uh, you will walk in the rhythms of grace that Daniel taught about last week. God bless you. We love you.